Brett, it's time. It's all going. So I will count it down, run the thing, and do the deal. It begins in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to There Will Be Dungeons, session 21. It's weird to think we've been doing this for 21 sessions. That's insane. Uh, that's about 24 weeks total, and uh, we're back. Hi, everyone. We're back. It's John, Scott, Bo, Kristen, Kyle, and you, most importantly, the listener, the viewer, the stream watcher. I'm going to read an email from a listener real quick, uh, or viewer, not sure which, named Carla before we start. And it goes like this. By the way, you can send your emails uh, by going to the website over at therewillbedungeons.com. Hey team, I just wanted to thank you for the show, There Will Be Dungeons. It has truly made my week better, and I look forward to all of your shows, but this one is special, right along with Core. Oh, that's sweet of you. Sorry, ITN. It's fine. Uh, you guys you guys truly have something special, and your co-hosts are amazing and funny and witty, and the list could go on and on. I truly hope you guys keep it going. I have shared your show with my own D&D club, and they agree as well that your show is truly epic. Thanks again for all you do, Carla. Well, thank you, Carla. It's very sweet of you. Now, there's, an, there's a chance that in some weeks past, I read Carla's email before, but I don't remember doing it. I just knew I really liked this one. So, Carla, if I got you twice, well, then that's super nice. All right. Yeah, I, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're all right. Uh, if you want to send your own in, uh, again, the uh, reminder is to head on over to the site. That's over at therewillbedungeons.com. We're starting a little bit different today. We usually do a little recap. Typically, that comes out of Bo's mouth, but not today. It's Kristen slash Hope's turn. So, Kristen, tell us what happened last time on There Will Be Dungeons. Trapped under a rock trap, the group <laughs> finds themselves badly battered, buried beneath a sea of stone released by a jostled Jimmy. Hope, managing to avoid dastardly damage, immediately went to work freeing her frightened friends. Relaxingly rested, the troop trekked deeper into the dungeon, discovering a desiccated corpse in a bed in a desolate den. After serious searching, Thailander's journal was uncovered, leading the quartet to question what they knew of the soulless simpleton. A door under the bed was also unearthed, and further down, the fearless foursome went until met one with one way around a deep chasm, one way that led directly into Thailander's diabolical drawings. Discussing what to do, our heroes were met with a tentacled cat and beaked brain. Fearsome fighting ensued, but dread not listeners, our team stood triumphant, Borel valiantly, Stanley stout, and Nash never faltering. Finally, ready to take on Thailander's tricks, they activated a trap of pitch black smoke, held hands, and walked into the anticipated abyss. Oh my gosh, that was so alliterative. I freaking yeah, loved it. Great. Astounding oh, alliteration. That was incredible. Also, big finish. All right, that was amazing. Holy crap. Bo, you may we may just want to just permanently have Kristen do it forever. She's really good. Stop trying to get out of it, Scott. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was really good, Kristen. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, excellent recap. Well done. Uh, so yes, when last we left off, you were in this uh, room with a, it was a large chasm in it, and it had a path for you to edge along the whole way around, and uh, there was an exit out on the other side. Uh, most recently, a trap, a glyph on the ground had been triggered, uh, causing a 20 foot by 20 foot square of, or cubic cube rather, of darkness, and you guys decided to hold hands and walk your way through it. And as you walk through it, not even dark vision could penetrate the darkness. You simply touched the wall and made your way along, hopefully out to the other side. Um, now I'm gonna ask uh, everyone but hope to take their headphones off, please. Oh man, all right. Oh. So hope, as you as you proceed through the, the, the darkness, um, you're, you hear the same sounds, but once you enter into the cloud, you know, you close your eyes, because what does it matter? You walk into the darkness, and you begin to hear whispering. You hear, pss, 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 pss. And it's of a demonic nature, and it's multiple whispers coming from different directions. And one whisper um, that you hear stronger than the others is one that says, 
Find me. Find me. Hello? It's, you hear nothing in response, but it repeats itself. Find me. Okay, now everyone can put their... Oh. Their headphones back on. Yeah. You can put your head... Yeah, the, I this, think that's the symbol the for headphones back on. All right. Okay. I saw Bo make the slight small symbol for headphones back on, but I wasn't sure. And then Kristen... Sure. Kristen was like, yeah. <laughs> did the, like... I'm being attacked by bagels hand motion, and that convinced me it was time to return. Nice it's work. The biggest bagels. I appreciate that. Varel, okay. the bagels! <laughs> Varel's back in. There he is. All right, so as you make your way through the darkness, I'm just checking to see if it persists after you leave at the dark cloud. Um, no, so you, as you make your way through, I believe we said Varel was first. I have Varel, Nash, Hope, Stanley as the order. So, um, Varel, you exit out onto the other side, and you see ahead of you uh, continued passageway and more mushrooms, a lot more mushrooms leading along the, the passageway. Nash, you come out after unscathed. And Stanley, you go to, you figure you must be nearing the exit right now, but you bump into Hope. Uh, it's just a little jostling, but Hope sort of stood still for a second. Nah, oh, uh, you all right, yeah. Stanley? I'm fine. Uh, just my side's getting a little to me. Is Would there you like to wrong? put your head? No, no, ev everything's fine. Okay, and, and you make your way, you continue your way out of the cloud of darkness and move into the new area. Uh, along the side of the chasm. So keep in mind the chasm walls, they're black. We're deep, deep underground. This is old strated stone. Um, the room is very dark. I believe you, we have some illumination from a lantern that you have, Stanley. Is that right? You're still carrying this? Uh, yeah. I believe so. Um, and so uh, it illuminates up the sh black rock and it's somewhat shiny. There's some moisture down here. Obviously, conditions for life, given that the mushrooms are growing on the ground. Uh, now, so you look ahead at the passage ahead of you, and it opens up to a wider spot where, you know, you can see some mushroom, and then it gets quite narrow, and then there's another curve on the passage where you see it's actually quite overgrown with mushroom over there. You'll be waiting at about knee-deep through mushroom on the passage. Were we in there for the expected amount of time, or was it an otherworldly travel? Uh, it, you know, you could feel the wall as you went through to guide you, and nothing about it felt didn't add up as you ran your cool. hand along. It took longer than you would have liked because the darkness was very uncomfortable, but nothing, nothing paranormal, I guess you could say. All right, I will, uh, I will take, you know, from my side the torch that was extinguished during the battle, and uh, hold it up to Nash for a light. Hmm. Thanks, I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> Only one of my eyes works anyway. I think he meant for you to, to light it, Nash. Oh. I, I got you, though. Shit. Press the digitate that torch on fire. <laughs> it wasn't lit, and he's like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Stanley, for that. Well, I got to Nash. keep you honest there, Nash. Can I do a listen check or yeah, to see if uh, if old uh, tentacles kitty at the bottom is pissed off and coming back up or anything? Uh, so let's say perception. Yeah, twenty two. Yep, you you do one of one of these, but it's more towards the back of your head where your your hole is probably, and um, you can hear the huffing of a sort of frustrated animal, like a, very quiet, just like a. <clears throat> Can't make out much more than that, but you do you do hear it. At the bottom seems of the, the tainted beast is still alive at the bottom of the ravine. It's unfortunate that the fall didn't take it out, but I guess that was maybe being optimistic. How do we know it's the same one and not three more down the way? A horrifying thought. Thank you, Nash. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can't be too careful and we can't see shit! At least the mushrooms aren't aggressive. As we get closer to the big mushroom patch, at the end I'll pull out my machete and get ready to hack through so we can see the ground before we walk over it. 
Okay. Would you like to take the lead then? Oh, sure. Cool. All right. Assuming we're still walking. Yeah, I will continue to kind of bring up the rear. Okay, so you're going to start hacking at the mushrooms? Yeah, to kind of see if I can reveal the ground beneath, because I, I'm going to assume there might be magical writing on the ground covered by mushrooms. Okay, so as you move forward, you go to start to start hacking uh, away at the mushrooms. Uh, can I get a survival roll, please? Yes. Seven. Okay, so the mushrooms are thick. Um, there's sort of this thick overgrowth of mushrooms, and you can cut them down and sort of prune the tops off, but um, really clearing them out to make sure they're it's all gone is on the process. It's going to take about 20 minutes per square, of, uh, five foot square, uh, where mushrooms exist to clear the pass out. So to gotcha. clear a passage through, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 20 minutes, maybe two and a half hours. Oh, jeez. That's uh, just to clear a passage out. And just to clear, that's to clear it clean. Yeah, yeah, not to just walk through. Do these appear to be the same mushrooms as the ones we've encountered previously? Not a different um, In type. the thicker overgrowth uh, here, you've no, you, you do see that they are, um, you know, most of them are still a pale white, but you see some that are gray, some that are, you know, a darker black color. And some that have like a purple tint to them. Are these uh, DM question, or maybe maybe we need to find this out? But are these? Have you said before whether how high they are? Like how far up do they uh, reach? Yeah, they're they're they go up to about your knee, so maybe a foot to two feet. They're okay. very large mushrooms. All right, they're these monstrous underground mushrooms. Okay, I roll a 20 perception, not natural, to look over this field of mushrooms, see if everything looks okay. And if it looks okay, I'll just give it a half-hearted whack before I walk onto a square. You're just gonna hack at the square in front of you? Yeah, I'll just do like a little bush hack. Okay, um, so you bring your, you're using a machete right now, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah, so you bring your machete down and slice. Does it confer any bonuses to clearing brush? Is that a thing for a machete? You see anything? Uh, I'm using it as a short, it's a short sword, is what okay. I could find. Okay, I thought so. machete was an actual piece of equipment you can pick up in D&D &D Beyond. But, um, all right, so you give it a quick uh, slash. You cut through some mushrooms and they flake off. And it sort of gets, it's wet, like a little bit of water sort of sprays and moisture. Um, you cut up some mushrooms. Cool. I'll keep moving forward in that way. Are they edible? Yells Nash. <laughs> Varel, do you know if they're edible? Okay, so you're not complete. Oh. <laughs> Varel, do you know if they're edible? They're not, yeah, Sorry, I want to know if they're edible, but I can only know by trying one, right? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, no! <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this again. I'll end up with bunnies. So never mind. I'm not trying it if we don't know. I just thought maybe it would help us gather food. But if we if we don't know, I have my fun with drugs, unless Stanley wants to do it. I'm not going to eat a strange mushroom right now, Nash. I'm doing bad enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> From previous smells, they appear to be filled with water. But all the same, I wouldn't trust the groundwater this deep underground that gave birth to such beasts as that cat. That's a fair point. Plus, not all of these look like the same ones that we crossed before. I think we need to exercise caution, but there's no doubt that whoever's down there uh, has some idea we're coming after all the noise we've made. I think we do need to move. Now, friends, I am able to hold my breath for some 15 minutes. If these are to spore in your face, you may want to consider some protection. <laughs> uh, That's a good point. All That's right. not a bad idea. I'm going to take my my robe and just cover everything but my eye. Just create a little, just a tiny hole and hold it tight like this. All you got is just the one eye like that. I'm going to uh, pull the goggles down, wrap the cape around my face, and proceed that way. I'll hike up the bottom of my shirt and hold it over my eye. 
and I will. <gasps> <laughs> Cheeks blown out to here. Um, okay, uh, so uh, tell me what you'd like to do. All right, well, I'm going to keep moving forward one square at a time after taking a casual slash. Okay. One second. Does anyone else want to queue up what they want to do, or just let? Hope go? I would be following behind whoever's in the back. So, assuming people are following her, I'm I'm right there as well. But behind. Okay. Well, all right. So stop your movements because you guys oh. are going crazy. Yeah. I, so I'll be behind Hope, and <laughs> yeah, you that's fine. I, I just picture Hope in overalls. But I mean, what do you have like on your back that would be great? Oh, my leather jacket. Okay. Cool. So I will be ready to grab the leather jacket and pull back in a collapsing motion should something. Explode. Okay, so as you're ca like you're casually, you're not taking the full twenty minutes to clear these things that we discussed, right? Like you're just like you're clearing, you're using the maybe the tip of the machete to look to see where you stepped. You're looking for glyphs, and you're cutting away some of the more the larger mushrooms that might, you know, be uncomfortable to walk past. Um, so everyone's pants up to their knees are kind of wet because there's a lot of moisture on the, on the mushrooms, um, and as you you hack one. And then you notice uh, you hack away a, a mushroom and it's sort of covering up some other mushrooms underneath. And they look like the rest of the mushrooms. But one of them in particular is purple. And this purple one just very suddenly and very viciously, it's, it's, it's hat, I don't know what you call the top of the mushroom, like recoils up and these four tentacles <laughs> fire out from the mushroom and grab your leg. Uh, and as, you, as the rest of you look around, you notice that there's some of these little purple mushrooms everywhere and they all begin to open up and shoot out these tentacles that wrap around your legs roll for initiative oh man what is the top of a mushroom head i think it's a head or a cap oh a cap, cap. Oh. yeah mm -hmm. mushroom Holy caps cap. that's it sorry uh four Psh, shit uh 21 for me four four i'm um, sorry for, there's a rule thing here right we're gonna, we're gonna use oh we want to use that like a note down your rules. Is that are you, is that with your um, thingamajiggies? Your adjustments? Uh, what adjustments for initiative? Initiative. Yeah, initiative. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I forgot if I even have one. Do I have one? That's Probably. a dumb thing. That's a dumb thing to not remember. Hold on. It's now located next to your armor class. And Which the screen is... has to be white enough for you to see it. Oh, yeah. I don't have any down. initiative bonus. That's I thought I remembered that, right? Okay. I think people have to add themselves to the turn, turn order. Is that right? What on this? The roll I don't thing? I see it, but there's nothing I can click on with it. Excuse me. If we drag our heroes? No. It's not working. All right, we'll forget it. I'll write it down on my end. You failed me, roll 20. All right, so uh, Stanley, your roll, please. 21. Nash, you said four. Four, yeah. Hope. 22. Burrell. 17. All right. Excellent rolls, except for Nat. Thanks. Mushrooms. <laughs> it's not really a compliment. It's just luck, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, and uh, the... All right, I rolled for the mushrooms. Um, all right, Stanley, you're up first. These these um, these these weird purple mushrooms. They seem to have four tentacles that grow out from underneath the cap, and sort of pull up the cap, and then the cap, like the hat, is like a turned up hat. You know, how you can turn down a hat and turn up a hat. It's like the hat's turned up, and there's these these large white pasty. Looks like they got slime on it. Tentacles that and they have four piece, and so uh, they rush out. Um, they're attempting to grapple people. Now you're reacting to this immediately as your turn is first, so uh, you can see where they are on the map. There's one next to Stanley, one next to Nash, there's one next to Hope. All right, well, immediately I'm going to uh, go ahead and draw my rapier and try to pierce the mushroom itself. Okay, roll an attack roll. That is a one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you go to uh, take your rapier out, and then you fumble it, and you drop it on your foot, and it actually pierces in. You know that part, the top of your foot, where you tie a shoe, like it's usually not like a steel toe boot. You drop uh -huh. it into your foot, and it just pokes in there a little bit, and you take a point of damage, uh, <laughs> as, as, and the sword falls to the ground. 
<laughs> you look it's the most disgraceful you've looked so far in front of your friends <laughs> that's not true uh, uh, yeah no. <laughs> I'm really glad that I'm in the back hopefully nobody noticed <laughs> um that you have, move and, you have move and potentially any bonus. Uh, oh, I, you know what? If I have a bonus action, a very frustrated, angry parlay is going to come out between <laughs> gritted teeth and make okay. the rapier lift up and try again. All right. Excellent. Roll your attack roll, please. I actually should put a sword on the table, I suppose. Oh, yeah. There's no sword out there. Better. Uh, let's see. That is a... That's a uh, 17 to hit. A 17 to hit. Okay. Um, that's a hit. These, these rolls. Uh, five piercing damage. Five piercing damage. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So you, you, you slice up the, the, the sword. You know, you say parlay and the sword floats up and loops in and cuts off a little piece of the fungus, but it's still intact. All right, Hope, it's your turn. All right, I'm going to look down, kind of give a little yelp, and then I'll call back, Burrell, help! And then I'll use my machete and bring it down to see if I can split the mushroom in half. Okay. Uh, roll your attack, thanks, please. A 10. Okay, it's a hit. Oh, cool. Well, look, I, luckily they're easy to hit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Sort of. Uh, four Lucky damage. For <laughs> okay, uh, so you bring... Let's not get carried away with calling <laughs> bring, things. Oh, you, no. You, oh, bring no. Your, you bring your machete down and attempt to cut the mushroom, and it digs in, and it's surprisingly resilient. Like, the mushrooms are slicing up, no problem. Mushrooms, you know, they give away the blades pretty easily. This thing, the, the machete sticks in, doesn't split. And you hear, um, you hear, you you feel a little like unnatural shuddering, as if it's vibrating from the pain. But it doesn't have a mouth, so it doesn't scream or anything. But you just feel this violent shudder as you as you put the knife in. Uh, you have then, a bonus and a move. Is it possible to shift one down to open up the pathway to Varel? Yep. And okay, we'll, perfect. We'll I shift one there. down then. Yeah. Okay, and so Varel. Perfect. I will. Still holding my breath for now. Advance sideways to attack the one that hopes on while intercepting number four off there and hit it with the lit torch I am wielding. Okay. So this is fire attack, basically. Yeah, I'm not sure. Actually, maybe there is a item torch, but uh, this will be a yeah. reckless attack. Okay, make an attack with the torch. Recklessly! A 23. It's a hit. Cool. I'm going to use a club as damage. Club damage, yeah. But I think we're going to say Maybe fire like... damage. Like, well, you're not trying to set it on fire, so if you're just hitting it. I don't think it gets caught on fire. So, Cool. All right, that is six points of damage. <laughs> okay. And you're hitting the same one she damaged, correct? Yep. Okay. So... All right, so you, you, you give it a whack, and it, it appears to, like, shrink into the ground as if, you know, you whacked a mole, and, went, and then it just pops right back out, its hand still reaching out. doesn't appear to have, you know, appears to have damaged it, but it doesn't appear to have ended its... its, its Reign of terror. Its life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, um, and then it's not holding on to hope right now, correct? No, they haven't made their attacks yet. Cool. But they are, are about to. So the um, the mushroom next to Stanley, the one that you pierced with your sword, um, they do have makes one d four rotting attacks. Interesting. Okay, so they're gonna make uh, yeah. So I guess there's a bunch of tentacles. So all four tentacles come out to attack you, Stanley. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of dice here. Hang on. And your AC is thirteen, right? No, it's fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, so um, all four tentacles reach out and attempt to um, attempt to like just touch you where you have exposed skin. So it, it extends out in a way that seems unnatural, and all of them miss, and they don't feel around for you except for one, 
which uh, reaches out and sort of smacks you in the face. It doesn't smacks you in the face, it scrapes where you don't have your face covered. It scrapes. It managed to it managed to get you good on the side of the head. Um, hits 28, sorry. And you take you take three points of damage, necrotic damage. Um, so it sort of cuts you and leaves a sort of burn in your face as you're like, ah, this is, this is black. Sort of pus coming out of where he was hit that the rest of your, your teammates can see. Um, reach down and smacks you. Uh, Nash, the one next to you, attempts to attack you as well. Uh, only one of the tentacles comes out and, to hit you, uh, and it actually misses. Is that uh, the one same... to the right of me? Yeah. Okay. Misses. The rest of it is still seemingly organizing its tentacles, and it hasn't really fully made a, a, an effort to attack you. Hope, the one that you tried to cut goes for you with all four tentacles. And your AC is 15? 16. 16. Okay, plus... All right, and all four, te- um, all four tentacles sort of, like, attempt to, like, wrap themselves around limbs, and you keep busting through. You just pull them off, and they don't they don't manage to do anything. You just notice on the tentacles that there's these little these little teeth, these little fangy teeth, and these little holes where, like, you've got to imagine some sort of secretion comes out of to harm people, and they all miss. But you just, like, disgust it as you're flinging these things aside. Um, now, Varel, the one that appears to be far away from you extends its arms in this long manner and is able to reach you and really from there. Um, and, but, but both of them miss. They both like, they hit, they hit scale. It just goes, and doesn't, you know, scales four, right? So they just sort of hit you and you shrug it off. Uh, Nash, it's your turn. Okay. Um, if, uh, so quick rule check. If I do a perception check, uh, uh, as to whether these things are, are rooted or are moving around freely, Mm-hmm. That counts. That's going to count as my major action. It's going to be an action to obtain that kind of information. Okay. Unless you have a special ability to do it. That yeah, I don't. Because um, I want to kick that one that's standing next to Stanley. I want to kick it into the pit. <laughs> like so bad right now. I just want to oh, freaking kick it right in the... How much damage did you do? You did like four to it, right? Who? Stanley did? Yeah. Stanley, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, no, I did five, because I rolled a one and I get a plus four. Cool. I just didn't know that. Alright, that's so nice. Sorry, back to you. I'm gonna, um, acid splash the one. Hmm. I'm trying to be strategic here. Be passionate! Um, the one next to Stanley. Which one tells you? (laughs) I'm going to do the one next to Stanley. The one that's right. just cornered from me. Your acid splashing, it's a constitution save? Yep. Of 13? 17. Okay. 17 constitution save. I caramba. Okay, it works. Roll your damage dice. All right. Oh, is it 10? D10 for that? Hold on. Sorry. Oh my gosh, now I have to look. You have to use the new <laughs> D&D Beyond with the new character sheets. <laughs> so if you go to the big box in the top right, just under where it says proficiency and speed, there's a button that says spells. Uh, click proficiency it, and, and speed. it's under your level zero cantrips. So click acid splash and a pop out will come up to the right and tell you it's cast at will. It's, oh, uh, there it is, 1d6. It's actually dex 13. And it's, it still hits though, and it's 1d6 poison damage. Yep, okay, here we go. Cool. Five. I'll take that. Five. All right. Um, so you you dump your acid on it. <laughs> you, just, you splash some acid on this thing, and um, its skin begins to bubble and cook. Sweet. And you, it's the smell of cooked mushrooms sort of fills your your area. Do you eat it? <laughs> it is it is it's continuing to attack though. It continues to attack on the beta. There's some you know some feral creature that it is. You guys, I say this is my final thing I do. I go. You guys, I know I was mostly kidding earlier but it actually smells good from cooking it with acid i'm not saying we should do anything about that i'm just putting it out there that's my move that's my last thing okay perfect so as your turn ends you hear you again hear that familiar sound of the beast jumping up and it jumps up behind you on the ledge behind you oh no having said what what happened here oh they brought mushrooms with it 
No! It's... Oh, it... <laughs> They're controlled by the beast. Oh, that's a mistake. Okay, and he jumps up again, and this time he just jumps up and sits there, and he has the appearance of waiting for you to be whittled down to weakness and waiting. He just kind of sniffs the ground looks up and then he, he takes his, his six legs and they're just kind of ready to pounce but not moving and his tentacles are sweeping the ground like a displacement motion right you know you do do a thing well he's sort of sweeping the ground in front of him looking stanley it's your turn you turn back and you see this and he's just standing there waiting for you to be weak so he can eat you i have no intention of being dinner today uh, I'm going to have my rapier move uh, forward to the one that's over by Nash. Okay, I'll give you control of it in a sec. Sorry. Oh, you you did? Okay. I Good. will. Sorry, I'm working oh, on okay. that. I just forgot how to do it. Oh, there we go. Done. One must control his own uh, sword. All right, so it's going to move there and attack the one next to Nash. Well, look at us helping each other out. That's going to be a nine to hit. It's a hit. Ooh. And that's going to be uh, eight damage, eight piercing damage to that one. Okay, so you, again, you cut a big piece of off. Shunk and it loses one of his tentacles, but now it only has three. And then with my uh, dagger, I'm going to turn and take a slashing attack at the tentacles of the one next to me. Okay, do it. That's going to be a 16 to hit. Damage dice. And that is going to be eight damage to uh, to the one in front of me. Yeah. So uh, you take your knife and you just shunk. And it splits apart into four, and a little little tuft of gas comes out. Uh, and it, it appears to stop moving. It sort of shakes and moves. And the tentacles flail about and then curl up inside and lets out a little gas. Don't breathe you in the spores, want... Stanley. Don't breathe in the spores. You still want to eat that, Nash? Hell no. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I didn't know they would basically fart when they die. F it. We're not eating these. Alright, and then I, I would take an opportunity attack if I moved, right? From the one that's near me. Uh, and Nash. Is that correct? Oh, sorry. I was... Sorry. I wasn't if, listening. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I were to move, would I get hit uh, as an opportunity attack? Yeah, uh, yeah. Some anyone's within melee range. Yep, that's an opportunity attack. Unless you move within range. Uh, I'm gonna. So I, I could theoretically shift over to there, or would moving through Nash? You can't move through Nash. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll stay. Unless here. he agrees to do a move on his action, you both use your action as well, please. No, I'll I'll stay. Okay. That's All my right. Turn. Then uh, hope it's your turn. All right. The tentacles Nash. are reaching out at you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, gross! So I'll wave my machete wildly and I'll go for another hit on the main body of this nasty little mushroom uh, with a 12. Okay, it's a hit. Alright, cool. And it does 6 damage. Okay, you're using your knife again? Alright. Yeah. Uh, you, you put your knife in it again. Ugh. This time it sinks in pretty deep. The tentacles flail about viciously trying to grab you, uh, but then they sort of fall to the ground as life seeps out from it. Nice. And then it lets out a little... And it sort of withers into the ground. All right, and then I will move behind Nash. Mm -hmm. And that's my turn. Okay. All right, so the mushroom next to you, Nash, with renewed effort, vigor and effort, attempts to grab you with two of its tentacles. And one's a critical hit. Oh no! Great. So one one tentacle sort of sw swipes and misses. The other one wraps itself around your neck and squeezes and drags its tentacle hook and hole shape 
across your face. Sorry. Tentacle. What shape? It does nine necrotic damage to you. Damn it. And it's just like this thing. It's like it goes around your neck. It squeezes a bit, but it's, it's not strong enough to actually choke you. But the, the thing just makes this big cut on your face. And your pus opens up. And there's this yellow <laughs> substance coming out of his face. And it hurts. And there's this black mark. And it's kind of... Family and Hope rolled the dodge pus. <laughs> yeah, gross. Did you say nine? Yeah. Nine points of necrotic. Nine, nine, nine points of damage. All right. Okay. Arrgh, I say. And I, I think I skipped Varel's turn. Actually, Varel's your turn. Cool. I will yeah. engage the one that attacked me. Mm -hmm. uh, I did find the information on Torch, and if I want to do fire, I can only do one point of damage. So you kind of. Aragorn it into the face to burn it. Otherwise, you're just smacking like you, a club. You roll to set it on fire, though, for the one damage? No, it just says one damage fire. Oh. So it wouldn't be inflamed or anything. So I will recklessly attack this one with my club. Torch. Club torch. Club torch. Hottest club in town. Yeah. 21. <laughs> <laughs> All your damage dice. You can Eight points of damage. Nash got it. I totally got it. You know what else was great uh, is I saw Kristen uh, do a little dance like she's going to Club Torch. I saw you doing that. You started going like right. this. You can hear the music. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. You beat someone with the torch. Way up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you, you hit it with the, you bring your hand over, just smack the mushroom, trying to discipline it into death. And uh, so you hit it, 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 it bounces into the ground, bounces up, its tentacles go flailing about and stretch out naturally. You don't kill it, but you give it a good knock on the noggin. Perfect. All right. Uh, now for the other, the mushroom's going to strike at you with, uh, returns, sort of returns fire with one of the, one of the tentacles. The rest of the tentacles seem to be um, regaining their composure or control. They're just wildly flying about. One of them flails at you, catches you in your eyeball. Oh. Does five points of necrotic damage. I rolled a 17. I assume that hits. Uh, yes. Uh, it catches you like here under the scale and just like, just rips. So then you got this big black tear coming out of your face. Badass. It hurts. Um, all right. And then so sensing sensing the oncoming uh, death and death. This, the the cat slowly makes its way. It walks up, just sniffing the ground, looking to see if, if he can <laughs> take a swipe at anyone. Does he have reach? Actually, uh, he does have reach. Okay. I take out a small water bottle and I spray him and go, "No." <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I doing? All right, this thing, man. All right, I'm just trying to fit. I'm trying to fit him into my stupid map. <laughs> All right. Um. So uh, he actually he actually reaches out with his tentacles, kind of half-heartedly to try and get a lucky swipe on you. Um. So his tentacles reach out over ten feet, Stanley, and try to try to nab you. And similar to the mushrooms, the end of his tentacles have these teeth, and then have these like little flappy things on them. You're not quite quite sure what they for. They look like fins. You said your AC was sixteen, right? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Seven plus five is twelve. So no, but thirteen plus five is a hit. Um, let us, uh, so one of them swipes you, sort of, boom, knocks you in the head, um, four, two, and six bludgeoning damage, and six piercing damage. One of the claws just cuts you, makes a big cut on your, gash on your head. Um, yeah, he knocked you really hard with the, with one of the tentacles, just like, boof. It looks casual, but he's a giant beast. <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't casual for you. Even no, it was no, it him. wasn't. That's, that's um, so a lot he of sort damage. of knocked you in the head, and uh, you're just like, whoa, just take stepping back as he tries to make you his dinner. Um, all right, uh, Stanley, it's your turn. Oh, good. Um... <laughs> that's the noise he's making. I was laughing. <laughs> Seriously, want that water bottle right now? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and start by taking a stab at the mushroom in front of me with uh, my dagger. Deal with one problem <laughs> at a time. Wait, kitty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
one moment to be on with there, you chat. shortly. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Uh, that's a 16 to hit. Okay, it's a hit. Roll your damage dice. Uh, that's going to be eight damage to the mushroom. All right, you kill you kill it. So you use your dagger to kill it. Yes. Yeah. So you bring the knife down again. It splits open, sort of shred it out from the root, and there's a little. There's a, you know, spray of purple mist comes out of it, and, and the tentacles drop to the ground. Dead life. Well, good. <laughs> Feel good beating up things after I've been beaten up. Uh, I am then going to move myself uh, over to here, try to get out of Death Valley, okay. and I will send the rapier to go attack the beast. That's... Out, roll just attack, outside. Roll. It's hitbox, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. That is going to be a 23 to hit. Jeez. Damage dice. Five damage. Okay. So again, the, the sword flies up, sinks in, it goes right here. As it gets hit by, <laughs> gets poked with the sword, but it doesn't appear to have slowed it down too much. Uh, it is now Hoopster. All right, cool. So seeing the cat and the mushrooms pretty much taken care of, I'm going to move to this side of Nash so I have a free shot of the cat. Um, is pulling out, readying my gun, that's a full action, correct? Mm, if it's one object, it's free action. Oh, sweet. Object. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have my gun. I'm going to get that out and take a shot at the cat. Okay. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you can you can do that. It's it's if you unsheath two weapons, if you were a dual wielder, you'd unsheath oh. one weapon, then both, if you had like two revolvers, let's say, that would be an action. But one is just a free, uh, free thing. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I shoot at it. I'm going to aim for right between the eyes. With my uh, shotgun, with a thir uh, 23. Okay, it's a hit. Damage dice. Right. Uh, nine damage. Okay. You, you, load, you load up a... Uh, pull out your gun from the top, and you load up... <laughs> bullet instantly connects with his head, and it goes... <laughs> All right. And it's still not dead, so I'm going to spend my action surge to cock my gun again and take another shot right between its okay, eyes. Okay, in one yeah. fluid motion... <laughs> Okay, oh, okay. I want you guys to know my fighter thing I took, I now get a crit on a 19 and 20, and I rolled my first 19 for combat. Nice. So I yes. 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 <laughs> All right, roll crit damage then. All right, so we got 18 damage. Oh, man. So again, you shoot and base. Oop, well, let me just see what the amount is on 18. Okay, you fire it again, and you, you hit in the same spot, as if your bullet was knocking in a bullet that just hit it further. So his head goes, and just like flesh, just like a bunch of flesh explodes from the front of his head, but you know it hasn't penetrated into its brain or whatever it's done. So it's just like there's a big gaping hole open in his chest. There's little sharp jagged pieces of skull where you can make out a skull and like veiny flesh bits hanging off from the front. He's got this big hole, and he's like, <laughs> this time it's gone wild. Like it's it triggered. Hashtag triggered this spicer beast. <laughs> <laughs> and it, he's just like he's real pissed. Anything else for your turn? That's my turn. Oh, I'll right, well, yell back. Stanley, get yourself covered. Nash, get behind me. All right. Varela, it is your turn. All right, I will continue. Cheeks a puffed to wail on my mushroom. So Reckless did, attack. Did I skip you again, Nash? You did. It's okay. Frick! <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing it. Mean, go back, right? No, let Nash take his turn now. Let's you want it now? Go. Yes. Okay. It's unfair. All right. Um, Sorry. I no, no, no. Up, it's man. all right. I, I, it's, it's, it's usually like right about the time you said, wait, did I skip you? That I realized you skipped me. So it's fine. Yeah, if you acid splashed, I think that's all you did. Never yeah, said, that's like, all I've done so far. <laughs> um, all right, I would uh, I would like to hurl a fire bolt 
at our cat friend, if I might, if I may. Fire bolted up. I think, can you... I have a question about your firebolt yeah. before we do this. Yeah. Can you cast more powerful versions of it? Uh, can I? I don't know. You, I don't... Can, you can use twin spell to twin it. That's what it is. Do I have... Okay, and, and at fifth level, your damage dice increases. It's okay, because I was looking through the new character sheets, and I looked through some of your spells, and some of them, if you click on second, three of your first level spells, you can cast at second level. Okay, so um, cast it well. But fireballs, no. Unless you twin it with your meta magic, it's fine. I just was wondering. I oh, okay. Um. All right, yeah, you're you're right, but it looks like I don't have. I'm not gonna be able to do any of that unless I. But I don't know how to twin it. I've never done it. Uh, twinning is just the same way as you do careful spell. You just say I'm gonna use my feature, my class feature. For you know, um, meta magic. If you scroll down to features and traits under your class features, yeah. it's all the way at the bottom. You have meta magic. You need to twist spell spells your needs. to suit your needs. Twinning spell. You can spend sorcery points equal to the spell level. One for cantrip to target a second creature in range. The same spell to target a oh, second it creature. To, it has to be a different creature. Yeah. Okay. So it's not uh, just double. Wondering. It's not like double hit on him. I thought you could. Yeah, that seems weird. But okay, I guess you can't cast two fireballs at the same. Person. Um, there is a second creature, though. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. On it. But uh, yeah, I'd hit Varel, I think, wouldn't I? Uh, no, you got, I think that's, that's. I think you're good on the line of sight, actually. Oh, yeah, Where's you're right. Line of sight? You're right. But, I totally could. I would, yeah, I think so. I might, yeah, I yeah, might, hit, the ch I might hit your chin, uh, Hope. Just beep. I rule that okay, as okay. <laughs> that's all right. Um, let's so if you want to twin, you, you know shoot what? a mushroom I, and a beast. I do want to do that, because uh, I haven't done it before. Let's do it. Yeah, spend your sorcery point, and you're good to go. Okay, so... Sorcery points. This has all been... This is so different now. Okay. I have now spent a point, and I will cast my spell. Uh, whoops. Let's get a d20 going. There we go. 13 to hit. Uh, which one is this one for? Oh, sorry. To the cat? Yeah, it's a hit. Okay. Um, damage Both dice. Damage Five again. Okay, and you guys are just doing a relentless attack. This fireball goes right into the hole where the bullets went. And just melts flesh and burns. Like, like rah, rah, and just sort of staggers back uh, from the onslaught. And now for your second roll. Second roll will be... So I need to roll for hit. Also, right? Yeah. Against the second. Okay. Se separate. Doesn't count as the same. I mean, the same die doesn't work for both. All right. Uh, Seventeen. To hit. Yep, it's a hit. Yep. And three. Damage. Okay. That bolt goes into it, uh, spurning off a piece in one of its tentacles. This jet of flame comes out as it lights up some of the spore stuff that's around it. Makes a little nice little poof. And it's gone. Neither one of them has died as a result of this, but you did inflict serious damage. Okay. Uh, you have a move and a bonus left. Um, I'm going to move here. Whoops. What can I own? Because I have that. Yeah, okay. I'm going to move here. And my bonus move is to uh, just ready my staff like a badass. Okay. <laughs> Cool. So visually, what is like a badass? It's like I, I've i got it in one hand, and I, I pull it up, and it goes... And I like spin it in my hand, and it spins like eight times, and then I bring it back around and hold it in both hands like this. And that's, that's my move. Badass. Badass. I feel like I should make you roll a save, and on a fail, it flies into the hole. <laughs> 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 oh, no! Uh, but we won't do that. You look cool doing it. All right, um, all right uh, so Varel, back to you. Excellent. Reckless attack. Holding my breath. Hitting the uh, mushroom. Yep. 17. Damage dice, please. Take him to the club with nine points of damage. <laughs> all right. Uh, when you hit him with the club again, right? Club torch? Yep. Yeah, this time you hit it with the club, and it... It just deteriorates, explodes into a bunch of mushroom bits. Take an 80s movie, slow motion, puppet style, and you just hit it, and just poof, 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 and the whole bunch of mushroom bits fly everywhere. The tentacles flop on the ground a little bit, and there's a little as a cloud of purple mist. 
<laughs> rises up. Um, all right, that's your action. You have a move and a bonus. I will move. Uh, mm -hmm. Sog one. No. 20, so I could get to there. And okay. I will move just behind Stanley's sword in front of the cat. Okay. Perfect. All right. The cat sort of stops there. And it's his turn now in response, or uh, next in the turn. Or oh, no, it isn't. It's actually Nash's r regular turn. So oh. Nash, you get to go again. Oh. So we skipped you. This is where your turn is supposed to be. He's regular now. Um. <laughs> oh, I may, I may have over. Well, let's We're see. We're all regular now. <laughs> okay. Am I? You see my arrow? Is, uh, oh, let me tap over there. Okay, I if, see the arrow. If it cuts through Varel Square, he's now in range. He's in line of sight, right? He just stepped in front of your range attacks, yes. Okay. Ah. That's okay, it's okay. Um, but you can maybe stand on the ledge uh, here. Like, uh, let me see. So there's a chasm here, so that's not a wall. So you can shoot it from... You can move and shoot him from range, right? Yeah. Over, over the hole. I could go... Because you're, most of your spells are probably 60 feet, so you're fine. I mean, if I do it from here... Nope, same problem. So if I go there... Yeah, I think I'll be more useful. I'm gonna move, um, okay. my man, my dude. <laughs> He's uh, guy. I guess little, uh, poopa. there. <laughs> move and, your man, move your man. <laughs> I'm moving my man. <laughs> it's like I used to say when I was a kid. So any kind of like board game, I, you'd say I'm moving my man. Um, what do I want to do though? Hold on. Okay, I think what I'm going to do from that range is send frostbite his way this has a 60 foot range on it um let's see six frozen damage okay uh let me do hit one shit Okay. <laughs> so you go to you, go, you walk up to the ledge, all Gandalf style, looking to throw out your your spell, and you fire at the frost bolt. The aim, the twist is wrong. The frost bolt flips up into the air in a big circle, and then lands in the back of your head and smacks you forward. You almost <laughs> fall into the hole, but you don't. But you'll have to roll your damage dice on yourself. What? All right, damage dice on myself. Critical failures. They're rough, man. Oh my hell. Hold Ask on. my foot about critical failures. <laughs> one! <laughs> yeah! Alright, you need one damage failure. to yourself. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Nash Mega. Failure in every way. <laughs> Alright, uh, so the beast looks and he realizes that he's now outnumbered. And, you know, he looks around, he takes an assessment. This is not his opportunity to strike. He makes for the hole again and jumps back down, clutching onto the sides into the darkness once again. Little pecker. What 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 a cat. Don't do it, Varel. I will <laughs> Varel, well, listen to Stanley, Varel. That is a frustrating it's, animal. <laughs> it's, it's Stanley's turn. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, lift my hand and call my sword back to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh... You know, you can physically restrain Varel if you really don't want him to jump. I mean, turn order... The combat order is pretty much done at this point, so you can all... Decide. Sure, I guess uh, to emphasize it, I will move forward. I'll put a, a very weak, trembling, bloody hand on his shoulder and just go, don't, Varel, don't chase him. All right, so I'll... you're going to restrain Varel, what do you want to do? Uh, not restrain, it's a, uh, I mean, if not he Not restrain, jumps, he council restraint. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. For real? I have my wits, and I'll look over my shoulder and give a little growl, and my eyes all torn and got necrotic blonde in it. But I want that cat dead. We Truly one of you with the, the elements could fire into the pit and relieve us of this burden i've got a good angle on it you can fire if you wanted to i mean can i see it 
Yeah, I mean, on its way down, like rather than participate in this conversation, we ended early, which is why I'm asking everyone what they want to do. Cool. So Varel's protesting to Stanley. Stanley is counseling restraint. Hope and uh, Hope and Nash, you can tell me an action you want to do right now. It all sort of happened at the same time. If that makes cool. sense. Yeah. I mean, I want to. I'd like. I'd love to try to hit him with something. So I'm going to do another firebolt down that way. Okay. Uh, Hope, what do you want to do? I'd step forward to look down over the cliff, take aim, and fire, and see if I can hit it right between the right. shoulder blades. Break Roll some attack rolls, both of you, please. Okay. Ten. Uh, it's 17 plus... Hold on. All right. 22. So the, bullet hits the, the, the bullet hits the rock in the back and breaks off a piece of rock. You hear this... You know, ricochet. Uh, Nash, you hit with the firebolt. Okay. Uh, just roll your damage dice. All right. It will be seven. Okay. So <laughs> you fire the bolt down, and it hits it in such a way. This is a cat-like creature. It's it's getting ready to land on its feet, likely. Right. So you hit it. You can see your firebolt. Fire it, and you hit it right in its butt. And it sort of throws it off balance, and you hear, <laughs> and then you hear a thud. Wow! And then you hear silence. It takes fall damage. And you hear nothing but silence. Yes, Bakondo <laughs> Goth of Warrior Strike Nash. Lucky shot. <laughs> well done. You blow on your finger. <laughs> no, I take my staff. <laughs> <laughs> Made up for that stupid I, uh, thing I did earlier. Yeah. That yeah, was you some... would have seen the cat like it, the light up and go off balance and fall down. You can't see the bottom, but you hear very wet, very loud, you know, bassy thud. And Varel, you do not hear any of the animal sound. Hmm. The only shame is that we may not desecrate its skull. Yes. So, uh, what what's the uh, rules for desecrating a skull? Uh, oh, you, uh, to oh, make sorry, use of it. RP, sorry. Oh. Uh, clearly, uh, Stanley would prefer to have a skull lantern than a normal flimsy metal one. Uh, that's absolutely true. It, skulls make everything better. <laughs> I would say that as I limp over and lean against the side of a cave wall, breathing very hard, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at level 2 on myself. Alright. Alright. Uh, 13 damage healed off of that. While I pride myself in tolerance, this this stings. Am I tainted? Uh, I don't know. Let, let's see if this works. I'm going to try to press to digitate the uh, grossness away from his eye. Ooh. Mm, it's not dirt. It's part, like, it's part his blood is, is hitting some sort of black a pus poison agent and just creating this like disgusting colored thing it's not injuring him any further but it's not pleasant to look at it stinks You'll re it'll require healing magic you're quite sure press digitation does nothing you say it stinks well, you mean it literally stinks stings oh stings. oh i think it stinks i was gonna launch into a big rp moment where nash could smell your eye i'm not gonna do it now well this is necrotic yeah, it should be stinky. Rotting flesh. Yeah. Hope, I mean, smell his eye. <laughs> it's just not what I said. That's all. <laughs> you, you go up and have to smell it. That's and we'll roll. I don't want to smell it. <laughs> I've changed you don't my mind. Smell his eye. No. No, I think it's, it'll be weird for him. It's too bad. The old stink guy. <laughs> it'll be weird for him if I do it. Anyway, Nash, so. why are you looking at Varel like that? <laughs> I'm just curious if it's necrotic damage. I wonder if it makes his eye smell bad. Nash, it's... can you even smell bad things? 
Yeah, my nose is fine. I have a nose. I mean, it's located above your body, and I just imagine you're used to bad <laughs> smells by now. Yeah, no, I I stink. I know that I stink. I then fart in my hand and throw it at him, <laughs> buttercup style. I am far enough away. You are only just. Wait, really is that a sexual spell? Is this a, do you have no, a it's to... not a spell. My brother, when I was younger, would say buttercup. He'd fart in his hand and then throw it at me. <laughs> I think it should be a spell. He was Korean, so he would say bungu, because that's Korean for bungu. Right. He'd go, bungu, bungu, and then throw it at me. Now, is this something he learned while he was with you, or did he come over with he the came, bungu He came ready? over at age nine with that, or no, 11, with that built he in. He brought the bungu with him. He brought the bungu with him. <laughs> <laughs> he it's brought the bungu. <laughs> <laughs> he brings out a jar and he's like, maybe it's superior. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> he's a weird guy, my All brother. Right. All right, so uh, as you guys sort of have an uncomfortable conversation, <laughs> we're all laughing, but you're still in this sort of tense situation. You hear a whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh oh. And you glance over and you look, and it just seems to be the normal glyph sound that the glyph is making, but it you're, you know, reminded of its presence just having picked up on it, uh, making a little sound. Well, we don't have any... Would the mushrooms work? You toss a mushroom on it? That's true, it did respond to bodies. Oh, though the beast from before, the brain, was semi-alive at the time of contact. Yeah, it seems to respond to beings that are still at least containing some life within them. All the same, we can experiment, and I'll pick up the uh, the mushroom beast by me, if I can. You can. Cool. I mean, it's, it's in pieces. You exploded it into pieces, so you grab a few pieces of the mushroom and try and Lego it back together when it doesn't, doesn't stay. Uh, I'll grab one of the caps and try to kind of Frisbee it onto the. Yeah, you take you take the like mushroom cap and toss it on it. it. Doesn't have an effect. I believe you tried mushrooms yesterday. You tried mushroom mushrooms, a dead body. Um, <laughs> we threw yeah. a lot of things. Two rocks, a sword. Uh, it seems based on the information that you've tried as a DM reminder, it seems to respond to a living creature. Sure, everything sounds silly when you lay it out like a list. <laughs> It yeah. all felt like a good decision at the time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not criticizing. This is I, no so editorializing on my end. I right. just like that you say you tried mushrooms yesterday. It sounds like something a cop or a yeah. parole officer would say. Yeah, we have to tase her now. Yeah. Uh, well, I could try to touch it if someone wants to hold onto my tail and pull me back. I'll do it. I want to. Was there a. Uh, when we did this last time and we threw the brain creature on it, was there a delay of any kind between the creature making contact and the cloud of darkness appearing? It was fairly instantaneous. Okay. There isn't really a... a if you set up a reaction, you'd make an attempt with difficulty. It'd be a high difficulty. We do have a bit more running room this time to perhaps... The one thing that you, I would also note is that um, the first time you encountered one of these glyphs, it was an explosion. The next time it was a cloud of darkness and so you're able to conclude that it could be in any number of spells tied to a glyph because mm. the one thing you do upon observation of it notice is that one of the letters on the side it does have a different appearance than the one you encountered previously in, in the longer ledge I know the pictures look the same here don't use that um Dastardly. Some quiggles are different here. I vote for jump. Or throw, if you don't feel comfortable jumping. What do you mean? I don't I don't know with my ribs the way they are if I'm gonna be able to make a jump. Throw it is. Throw me. Throw me. I wanna be thrown. That sounds awesome, Pharrell. Stanley does make a good point, though. He is injured, and any impact on the far side would be yeah, perhaps F deadly. F Stanley. I want to be thrown. Throw me, 
then I'll be on the other side, work out how to get Stanley there some other way, but I really would like to be thrown. Please. I'll throw you, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I listen. Won't it help if we've got one of us on the other side? <laughs> I don't know how. So the way it works, jumping works, is when you make a long jump, you come a number of feet up to your strength score, but you have to move ten feet to run before the jump. So whatever your strength is, is the amount of feet you can jump with a ten foot jump run. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, automatic without a roll. Uh, that's right. Now, if you're jumping over a chasm or something difficult, there will be a DC check. Um, but otherwise, you'll hit it. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Cool. It, it's to clear, if you have to clear obstacles, sorry. You can do it without a roll. Um, unless there are mitigating circumstances, like a low ceiling or some kind of some kind of feat that makes it harder than a normal jump. Mm. I would say this is pretty much a normal jump, given that you have straight running room, so there won't be a DC check. So, are we having standing. to be able to jump 15 feet or 10? It's a 10 foot gap there, I think. So, right, right. <clears throat> right here is it, if you go diagonally, you get 10. If you go here, it's 15. 15. Uh, but it's 10. Like, no, don't go from there because it's the squares. It's 10 foot of do this. Yeah, because technically you're just jumping. Oh, uh, I see. Like, main distance. Yeah, I got gotcha. The square is 5 by 5, so the clearance is 10. Okay. Okay. Stanley will have to roll a difficulty check because of his injury. I can certainly try it. I think you all should go first in case something goes wrong with mine. You should be clear. Does everyone have enough strength? I assume everyone's over 10 on strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never use it, so I should look. I didn't realize that either. It should have made the glyphs bigger. Uh, where did they move <laughs> strength to? Why is, is so where's strength? Where's strength? Oh, there it is, eleven. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Let's so do. everyone's jumping. Yeah, I'd really like to get thrown, but I'll jump. It's fine. I mean, you, Varel, you could throw him. Nash really wants to be thrown. We can throw in the sands above for safety. Perhaps now, next to a chasm, next to an exploding glyph, might not be the time to test Nash's balance while being thrown by one as strong as I. Well, excuse me, Mr. Osha Lizard. Fine, I'll jump like the rest of y'all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run and go for it. I'm okay. just gonna go. I'm gonna go this direction. Running start, you jump and you jump and sail through the air, seeing the glyph glowing beneath you. Yeah. There's a moment of apprehension when you think, oh wait, maybe it'll detect me even though I'm not touching it. As, <laughs> but nothing happens and you make it safe to the other side. Sweet. That was a good jump, I, I do. I am impressed, Nash. Thanks. I apologize. No, it's fine. I was. I just want to get thrown. We'll do it a different time. We'll find another opportunity. Because doesn't that sound? I mean, it sounds fun to me. I can't. I can't speak for everyone, but. I very quietly look over at Varel and say, "Look, when you've lost your wiener, you have to get your jollies <laughs> any way you can." <laughs> Wow. Should have used his bullhorn for that, that one. was a low blow. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't hear it. You're over there. Wait. That was a me and Varel comment. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I didn't hear it. <laughs> but it's true. Nash and I have performed feats before. What if he were to make me giant and I picked up Stanley and merely placed him on the other side? Am I hearing you oh. say this? The, an the answer from me is yes. Yes. Is it from me? It's yes. <laughs> it's a yes from me. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm that all. I'm work. dude. Yes is the answer. If someone's asking Nash, absolutely. You have my staff. Let's do it. All right. Cast a spell. Describe it. Uh, I. I don't know. I remember how I did it last time. Uh, I hold my staff in the air and I go. Uh. Let's see. Uh, a spirit of horse, skeleton of pig, make Varel super big. <laughs> oh my god! And then I cast, uh, I cast it across the thing, and uh, let's see. I have to do to hit right or do yes. it. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh! It just so it just worked. All right. You're my favorite DM. Yeah, 
there's no he, he, it's a willing creature so there's no dc if to resist if it's an unwilling creature because you cast reduce on the displacer beast last week and it resisted your magic right um but uh varel's willing okay i'm back varel just grows like scientific experiment. you got one minute <laughs> no, here, Shadler, come here, all right i'm gonna move over to him okay i'm Get I whatever grab assistance him, he can offer. Grab him around the the torso and then a hand for butt support. <laughs> right. Let's Sweep it underneath. And then uh, we'll kind of, I guess, lean over the glyph. Hey, right, I'm well, tall you, enough. You, you lean over and you've got to give him a little toss. So let's get a DC5. Oh, could I that. straddle it? You could actually throw him over your shoulder and probably do a little hop and run over it yourself. Okay, I, will, I don't uh, know if your leg span. I get it can reach yeah. ten feet, but he's I the same. Like he, he's the same cube. He's the same four by four cube. So he should be able to foot in foot. You know, a foot on each side, right? Without. I guess I don't. I don't know. Like, there's no rules for how far you're. You know, you do one of those long steps. Yeah. <laughs> there's no long. Like, Ur! so I just use the jump rule to make the long steps. So, okay. your strength. Your strength doesn't actually change, but I mean, you have like a strength of seventeen. 16 no actual human can split their legs 16 feet i don't think so let's yeah. say as a as a giant person you can so yes you step there's your legs uh, you step over the room <laughs> you, you're holding uh you're holding nash in your shoulder you have to move aside there buddy and there you go you made it across then you drop stanley down gently gently and uh, now you can allow Hope to run and jump, or you can ferry her as well. With the next I hope to go to help. <laughs> All right, Varel. <laughs> All right, so you walk back across, pick up Hope, and move your way over. I keep moving mushrooms. Right. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you ferry everyone across in giant lizard form, being very careful not to disturb the glyph on the ground. Yes, and I do some air punches. Cool, cool, cool. John Morrell. And as you do the punches, you. I'm Jay Morrell, and you. All is well because the next uh, passage is only about six or seven feet t in tall, so you can just barely get through. Kind of Sarah, uh, perfect timing. And you look to the hall ahead and wonder what's next in this weird cave. And the voice rings out and says, you'll find out after the break. After oh! the break! After these commercial messages. We'll be right back, everybody. Don't go no place. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> 